What's up guys, my name is PK, welcome to a brand new, exciting, phenomenal creations Fusion 9 tutorial. This, damn it's been a long time since the last one, I'm super excited, super hyped about this one, since we can go again a little bit more advanced inside the software, we don't have to just go over the basics, but hey, if you're one of those who just have just opened up Fusion, you have no experience, you don't know what you're doing, then I can strongly recommend. I have two tutorials, the first two ones in the series. This is episode number three. They will go on getting started and understanding nodes. So really good quick tips on how to get started with the software. So this tutorial is so much easier to follow along with. And yeah, so this is episode number three where we're tackling probably the most um, efficient, not efficient, like essential building brick inside vfx that's animation so pretty much all vfx have something to do with, with animations if, if it's moving it is transforming if something is changing some kind of animation is probably happening so in this tutorial i'm going to show you really the basics of how to create an animation how to build it how to find the settings and how to start experimenting and doing stuff inside this program and not just showing you how to make one thing go to another place um, from point A to point B like this. Since I have seen a couple tutorials on YouTube which shows that this is uh, which is titled the most advanced beginner learning animation in Fusion and then I found something like this. It's a 15 minute long tutorial on showing how to animate one thing to go from point A to point B and I just find it pretty ridiculous. So in in the change, in the difference, I want to show you in about 15 minutes how to accomplish something like this, which is a really basic concept of motion graphics, but I'm going to show you how to make these smooth size pop-ups, going to the side, drop, having a good time sync with the animations, and then this uh, text layer which is popping up from out of nowhere, so to speak. So. All in all, I think this is going to be a really, really informative tutorial and you're going to really like this one. So, why am I still talking? Let's just go ahead and dive deep into this tutorial. And hey, bonus question. If you do notice something different about this tutorial and different from all my other tutorials on the channel, please comment down below and see if you find what has been changed and evolved in the process. Okay, let's go. So let's go ahead and add a new composition for all this. Let's go just a file, a new control N and let's go ahead and save it and call it something really simple. So let's call it just tutorial. I just want, I don't want to lose you on the beginning. So I just call it tutorial. So we don't, don't do anything fancy. So in the, the first getting started tutorials, I did show you how to use nodes and put import footage and all this. So I'm going to go pretty quickly over those to build up my elements. And then we can start focusing on the animation itself. I think that's a pretty good rhythm that, right there. So I'm going to go find my loader node. And now I don't know why it didn't appear. Let's try again a loader. Enter like that. That's good. So take my background texture. Click open. Let's put on the second viewer. Let's force all tile pictures. This. Let's fit that to the screen right there. Let's find not another loader node. Let's take my logo here. Like this. Let's put on the first viewer. Fit that. And hey, that's also a little small trick I can I can share with you guys. So if you have a PNG image. Uh, and you know a PNG which has transparency in the image and you import it to Fusion uh, in some case it might just still have that white background you just try to erase and you don't know how to get that uh, get that away it's really simple you just select the image go to the from in the right in tools panel let's go to the import panel and just click post multiply by alpha boom that will take away the white or the, the thing you want it to be transparent so there's that. All right, let's go find a merge node so we can put these two together. Let's unlink those. Let's put this in the background. 
this and let's put our logo in the foreground. Let's have the merge tool visible in the second one. Let's go ahead and size down our logo here. So when I'm in the merge tool and I'm playing with the size, it automatically uses the foreground as the thing I'm controlling and not the background, even though they're both connected. Okay. So now we're in a pretty good starting point here, and I think we can start animating from here. So I want to animate uh, this the basic pop up so it goes from zero pixel height or size and goes up quickly and smoothly. That's what I want to do. So what we can do here is in the merge tool we have pretty we have a lot of options to play with. So I'm gonna just use the size here to uh, to do the animations. So let's go ahead and right click on the size and to click on animate. So this is basically like in After Effects, what you do is you apply your first keyframe. That's pretty much the same thing. And this also adds like automatic keyframing. So when you go to another pl another point on the timeline here down and you change something, it automatically puts like a keyframe, just like in After Effects. So that's just really similar. So since I'm in the beginning of my comp here, that, uh, that means when I change this to zero, let's put all the slider all to the left. And then I will just slide this, um, the frame here. Let's go to like 40 frames, which is about just under two seconds. Size this up like this. Let's go 10 frames forward and size it down just a touch like this. And now if I just take away the... the the player head, you can see these three green lines here at the bottom. And what that means is that's just displaying the keyframes we have added for our animation here. So if I go to the beginning and click space or play, we can see our animation. It's really static, it looks boring, but we have our animation. So that's cool, all right? So what we're gonna do now is what we, uh, we select the merge node and let's go ahead and make it a bit more smoother. So how you can view this animation is you can go to the timeline and you can click selected. If you have the merge tool selected, you can just view the selected ones. Or if you unclick the selected button, you can see every layer on the timeline. Pretty handy. So here we can see um, the animation happening over here. We can go ahead and uh, go ahead and plus this up so we can see what's going on. You can see here's our animation the timeline. We can't control it that much over here, but when we go to the spline editor and just click on merge so we can see our merge options here, here we can start playing around with our animation. We can control it, we can make it smoother. We have every possibility to control the animation over here. And it's really similar in Adobe After Effects. They, they have a really similar control here, even though Fusion has a couple of cool tricks here. Uh, so let's go ahead and scale this up so we can see what's going on. Let's go ahead and click and hold this arrow here so we can make this taller. So we can just, since the animation is pretty small scaled by adding like uh, the, the scale increments in a different matter here. Let's just scale it up. That means we can see the animation a lot clearer so it doesn't look like a straight line. It just helps out. And here up we can do the same thing. here. So we can see, we can see straight lines and that means we have a linear animation going on and what that means is with a constant speed and pace it's animating from point A to point B to point C. So I want to add some curves which add smoothness and how we do this we go click on one of the points right click it click it and click smooth or use the shift S shortcut let's click on smooth and that will add some cur curvature for this uh, animation curve. You can go to the Sorry, let's go to the second one here and click Shift S to smooth it out like this. See how this looks like. It is definitely more smoother now. Smooth the playhead. Cool. But I want to have it a bit more poppy, a little more snappy. So let's make it a little bit more quicker. How we can do this, we can go take these two uh, the last keyframes we can highlight them by clicking and holding and dragging a box click on the um, 
the the keyframe hold shift and go and get, uh, put it to the left and by holding the shift we don't accidentally go up and down we change the values of the sizing we just want it happen to a little bit quicker so let's put it right here see how this looks like it's better but I still want a really smooth ending for my logo to to land not just it's a quick smooth animation so let's select this and add a bigger curvature so there so the ending is a lot longer and a lot smoother before it reaches the end let's see how this looks like really nice let's go ahead and add a smoothness also to the end here I like it. I like how this looks. And as you do, as you know, you can go ahead and anytime in your animation, you can go and deep dive and change these to really small increments. If you want to just nail it down right, I just want to show you the basic principle of this. And I, I think we did a pretty good job. A small trick here is we can go and add motion blur to our scene. How we do this is when we have the layer selected, as we do, we go up here in the tools panel, we have the merge. And we have the channels and there's this little target knob here we'll click on this we can find motion blur let's check the box and we have motion blur then also a little bonus you have four parameters to control the motion blur so you don't need a separate effect like in after effects you need a separate effect to control more of your motion blur so it's nice to have it baked in like this so when we go and see we can see some motion blur happening cool so let's go to the flow area and see what we have here. Nice. So let's go ahead and just trim the comp down. Like this. So this is pretty much what we have here. So you have learned how to make a smooth size pop up. So let's use one of those methods now to move our animation to the side here. I'm going to make this really quick now since now you have learned how to do this but instead of using the merge node which i could do i will use the transform node to use an effect so you learn the basics of using an effect and animate the effect but it still affects the the clip in the same matter so what we do here and i'll just select let's go drag out the comp here let's see here so it scales up and here i wanted to start positioning away Select our clip here and find a transform node like this. And the center um, acqui acquisition here or center point here is basically the X and Y axis for the layer. So I go right click, animate, go about 10 frames forward, use this arrow key to go straight to the left. Let's see. And if your PC does run slower than mine, you can go here down and click on this MB that will deactivate motion blur so you can have quicker renders before the end rendering. But still, but because my PC can handle it, I will leave the motion blur on. Okay, then let's jump out to the spline editor and let's not view the size here. Go ahead and smooth them out with the shift s command see how this looks like we'll live with this it's nice but i still want the, like the same smooth ending so let's see what we can do here that was pretty quick let's make it a bit slower i think that looks pretty good Okay, we can go to the timeline also and see here our animations and we can go ahead and and deposition them so we can position the animation a bit slower here in the timeline so we don't have to do it in the spline or in the flow area so nice could go ahead and get a bit more Cool. All right, so now we got 
All right, text is going to the left. We have our pop-up. Let's go ahead and add some text here. So adding some text, we need a new merge node since when we add new things like new layers, we need a new merge node. That's pretty much, that's the basic essential of the program. Let's find the merge node here. Let's add this is the merge node to the merge node. And then let's go ahead and click on text plus here to get a text here, but you can also find text plus in the select tool option. That doesn't change. Let's go up find, just type in Phenomenal Creations. Let's use the agency font. We keep it on bold. Let's see how it looks like. Yeah, looks pretty good. Let's put it on the, the output to the, the foreground of the other merge tool and then click merge on the second viewer. So we have our text on our second viewer. If this was confusing to you, um, in the understanding nodes video, I I will explain everything what you just saw in one minute really clearly. So then you understand what just happened if you have no idea. Let's go ahead and size this up. Like this. All right, so I want to add some opacity changing animations. So what we can do here is, as we have done here, we do exactly the same animation process, but where you find the opacity is when you go to the text, you have it selected, and you click on shading, then you can find the opacity tab here. So what I want to do is, when the logo goes away, about here it starts animating. What we do is right click, animate, put it on zero, so we have it nothing. Let's go about 10 frames forward and click the opacity to one. Let's double click the flow air so we don't see any controls. Looks pretty much like that. Okay, that's pretty quick. Let's go to the timeline, have the text. Let's make it a little bit longer. Nice. Then to finish everything off, I wanted to add that little position happening like so it scales goes from up to down during its um, animation of the, uh, the the shading or the opacity and to add that position what we do is select our text layer and find the transform tool here just like this let's go move the playhead so we can see when it starts I want it to start animating from here when it's still in the zero pass, let's go click on animate for the center and then just drop it down somewhere like here. Let's go move the playhead. So just before it gets to a hundred percent, I wanted to to animate up again like this. This let's still go ahead and make it smoother. Nice, we're having a really good, good thing going on here. So playing through this, we can see our basic animation here, a basic motion graphic animation here. So this took a little bit while, a couple minutes, maybe longer than 50 minutes, I promised. But hey, now we have achieved our goal here. I've shown you how to create a really uh, simple animations, how, where you find the, the controls and where you can find different places to control them even further. So I definitely found this video helpful for me myself. I think this was a cool project. I hope you guys did like this. And if you did, don't forget to like and comment your suggestion for any fusion project in the future down in the description down below. And also tell me what you liked about this one. And then, hey, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If you haven't already, click that subscribe button, ring the bell so you don't miss out on any new videos. So. Subscribe if you're interested in for After Effects and Fusion. If you really dig this one, subscribe to the channel right now. And my name is VK, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Stay awesome.